So now we're going to give an example of how you use these building blocks by looking at how you put together a memory array. So for this example, we're going to use muxes and buses and decoders and put everything together to see how memory works. So let's start out with what a memory is. So a memory is a 2D array of cells. So here's our two-dimensional array, and it has all these cells, which are these squares here. Each of these cells is going to store one bit, either a one or zero. So obviously if I want to get eight bits out, I'm going to have to read out eight, eight of them. Now when we go to read out memory, what we do is we enable a whole row of data at once. And we can only access one row at a time. This means the rows are hot. So here I can, we have a one hot encoding of the rows, because I can only access one at a time. And if I enable one of these rows, it's going to enable the readout of all these cells. Now when I read out all of these cells, it's going to send their data down wires coming out of the bottom of the array. So you can see that if I enabled two of these rows at the same time, they'd overwrite each other. So I can only enable one at a time, which is why the enables are one hot here. Now if you look at this array here, I've got 16 bits of data output from the memory every time I activate one of these rows. Now let's go ahead and build a memory using the logic blocks that we talked about before. So here's our array of SRAM cells. And we have some things we need to deal with. We want to use a binary address to access our memory. We don't want to use one hot. And we want our output in bytes. And we saw in the previous slide that we get our output as 16 bits at a time here. So we're going to use the logic blocks we looked at before to figure out how to fix this. So let's get started. Here's our 4-bit binary input bus. And it's 4 bits because we have 16 bytes in our memory array here. So we need 4 bits to address all of those bytes. And we've got our one hot row enables, because we're going to enable one row at a time to read it out. So what do we need to put in here? What logic block do we need going from our binary address to our one hot enables to enable us to take a binary address and choose the right one hot row enable? Well, we need a decoder, because a decoder does exactly that. It's going to take in a binary address, and it's going to activate just one of the outputs. Now, if we look at the bottom here, and for every row that we activate, we read out the first 8 bits, but we also read out the second 8 bits at the same time. So reading out 16 bits at a time. But we said we want this memory to read out one byte, just 8 bits at a time. So how do we fix that? Well, we've got two 8-bit data buses coming out of here. And now the question is, what do we need to select between the two 8-bit outputs? Well, here we need a MUX. And this is exactly what a MUX does. So MUX is going to take two inputs here, these two 8-bit inputs, and it's going to choose one of them and generate a single 8-bit data output. So now we've got the key blocks that we need for our memory array here. We need a decoder, which is going to take in a binary address and is going to activate one of the rows. And then we've got a MUX, which is also going to take in some sort of a select signal and is going to choose between which half of the data we read out. So now let's figure out how we hook these up. You can see I didn't even hook this directly up to the decoder, and we don't have anything hooked up to the MUX to drive it yet. So for controlling the decoder, we're going to put some of the bits in here. So in this case, bits 0 through 2. This is an 8-output decoder, so it needs 3 bits. And then I'm going to take my remaining bit, that's bit 3 from my 4-bit address, and I'm going to hook it up to my MUX over here. So I've got one bit here because we've got two choices to choose from. So, the address bits 0 through 2 are going to select one of the rows. So we say we select row 4. And then address bit 3 is going to select which half of the output. So if address bit 3 is 1, we're going to select this half. And that means we've read out these 8 bits from here. So you can see by having some of the address bits go into the decoder, we select the row. And then by having some of the address bits go into the MUX down here, we select the correct columns. So let's take a look at an example of how we read out of the memory array. Say I want to read this entry right here, 1100, or address 12. How would I go about reading that address? Well, I have a binary input here, 12, which is 110, which is going to go into my RAM, and I want to read out that value. So which one of the outputs here is going to be activated from the decoder when I select this address? Well, in this case, the decoder is going to have as its input 100 which is 4 in binary, so it's going to output, activate output 4. So the input to the decoder is binary bit 0 through 2. Here is 0 through 2 in blue, and that's 100. So we're going to get in binary, and then we're going to get the one hot value out with bit 4 activated. So it's going to activate bit 4, which is the correct row to read out this value. 
Now, when we activate that row, all of the cells in that row get read out. So we've now read out 16 bits of data, but we only want 8 bits of data. So what happens after that is the last bit in our address, bit 3 here, goes down into our MUX. And it's going to tell our MUX to select input 1. Here's input 1. And so this data is going to come through the MUX, and we're going to get out as our value, finally the correct thing. So some of our address bits were used to choose which row we used, and then one of our address bits was used to choose which half. So we used a decoder and a MUX to build this array. So the decoder used the first half of the bits, and the MUX used the last bit. So here's an example of a circuit layout for a real memory. This is an SRAM from ARM, and it looks a lot like what we just saw with a few other features that are needed to make SRAMs really work. So here's the decoder. So the address comes in here, it decodes the values, and then it goes up here, and these are basically wires that go and drive each of the rows. This is the big SRAM array in here. At the top here, we have a bunch of circuits called pre-charge and write drivers. These are used to allow you to write into the memory arrays, and they're pre-charged to make the memory array read out faster. Down at the bottom here, we have things called sense amplifiers. Sense amplifiers basically read out the very small signals that come from the memory array and make them larger. And then finally, here's the actual array. It just looks like one blob because it's so many small signals and so many wires in there. 